I'm Michelle Joy Nixon here on 103.9 on the Scott Grant Show. Never forget, joy is always in you. Here to talk about heart and soul ministry and so much more. Hi, this is Scott Grant. You're listening to the Scott Grant Show uh, from beautiful downtown Ponte Vedra Beach. I'm here today with Jennifer Price. Excited to be here. And Michelle Joy Nixon. Ditto. I am just beyond the moon happy to have you on the show. I, I've been following you for years, and I think you're really just great. Now, I saw the other day that you, uh, while you were at the University of Florida, you were on air with uh, a local TV personality, Vic Michelucci. Tell us about that. Yeah, Vic Mick. That's my um, buddy and pal. We actually went to the University of Florida together, and we did campus news. He did the news. I did the sports. He did sports. I stayed away from the news. I always say it was too negative for me to to get involved in into that aspect of entertainment. But uh, it was it was a fun ride. We got to experience a lot of great Gator moments because when we went to the University of Florida, I was in Arizona for the 06 championship against uh, Ohio State, and then I also was in Atlanta uh, for that Final Four championship, and then 08 in Miami for uh, the Tebow uh, championship as well. So it was just a really cool time there yeah, Florida. classic gator history well and that, that is sort of the golden era for university of florida sports because you have the two uh things going on at once I mean, you have tebow and everybody knows tebow and football but you had the uh, uh billy i'm trying to remember his name uh, basketball billy team. donovan billy donovan yes that's the right. fab five that was a good team, and some of those guys are still playing in the NBA. Yeah, back to back. You know, Al Horford is putting up stats, and Corey Brewer, and we still have a lot of players uh, doing big things in the NBA from from that Gator team. You know, I always liked that team, and I, you know, I came, from, I grew up in Indiana, so I'm a basketball kid. Right. I, that's Pacers, the only sport. Hoosers. That's the only sport that matters in the state of Indiana, mm-hmm. particularly mm-hmm. when I was a kid. Um, uh, where did those kids come from? Where did all those great players that Donovan had, where did they come from? You know, it, it, after doing a lot of just research and, and, and having to kind of dig deep into their family history, a lot of humble beginnings. And uh, But were they Florida kids? Yeah, or? I think it was shared. Honestly, I would have to look back. My life is is a lot different now than, than sports and sports knowledge. But um, I'm not sure exactly where they came from and where they grew up. I just know definitely from humble beginnings. Yeah, and well, uh, athletes often do. Uh, yeah. You know, I mean, I think that, that, that somehow that matters. They come from a background where the, all they have um, is, you know, the ability to go outside and play a sport. And, you know, if you come from a background where you're uh, playing video games mm. or watching YouTube, um, which is something my son does, you know, there's not a lot of time left over when you're playing all, doing all those things to go play sports. No, if you're in sports, it is almost 100% that is your main focus and uh, just getting better at your craft and, and your gift and, and uh, staying that, you know, agile. And uh, so when you're there, obviously the football is a big deal. The basketball, not as much so. Is that right? Is that the way it was? Or were, or were people pretty much pumped up about uh, Billy Donovan and the back-to-back uh, national championship? Yeah, we were coming off of those uh, back-to-back. I graduated in 2010 along with, actually, Tim Tebow graduated the same month I did. And, and Vic Mick, I think he was the same year as well. So, it, you know, it's just a great, it's just great history, like Jennifer said earlier, just to experience all those Gator victories and, and moments and uh, yeah, it's it was pretty cool to do. It was pretty cool to be a, you know a television sports reporter for our campus news station. Work along uh, Mick Mick Hubert, you know this the voice of the Gators, and uh, the radio stations there. And and uh, that was my that was my teenage dream. So and that you had said that in the when we were talking before that this was your dream to be a sports reporter. How does a woman or a girl, a teenage girl, decide that this is going to be their dream? Sports reporting. Yeah, well, I'll tell you, she is raised in a cul-de-sac of all boys, oh, okay, growing okay. up. So I'll give you a little bit of history there. I grew up on the west side of Jacksonville, and we had the model home when I was one year old. And I have a younger brother, two years younger, on the right side. Uh, my neighbors to the right were a family of three brothers, um, very diverse black family. And then the left was a Filipino family, three brothers, and then one kid tall athletic moved in from romania across the street so i was the only girl in our entire neighborhood so i grew up knowing how to shoot hoops and i never got picked last on the on the basketball you know make it or take it tournaments and and also it's you know learn a great spiral how to throw a great spiral for my dad so that was my dream 16 i was i always said it's on one of my websites 
a tomboy at heart, a girl on the outside, but a tomboy at heart. And uh, I got to live it out, you know, and it started literally just hooking up with the sports personalities here through Gator Clubs uh, around the city and uh, working alongside those guys who are still in radio today and then uh, went to the University of Florida. So super special. And are you still a tomboy? Absolutely. Uh, as we speak right now, I have a ball cap on, right? And you do. It's, it's, and it's purple. Yeah, uh, you know, in case of people at home, she uh, Michelle wears purple. I've noticed that. And she's all in purple today, so she's not disappointed. I was about to say, she's the girliest tomboy I ever saw. Yes, yes, I am. I can I can definitely dress up, um, I, but I love my sports, and I love just hanging with the guys and also have a lot of great girlfriends. So I, I think it's a good balance. So then later on, you, you go into sports broadcasting. I think what we'll do is we'll take a break. We'll let Mike... Kaufman, play some music, and we'll come back and we'll talk about that. We love Mike. Hi, I'm Billy Bussard, and I interviewed the Beatles, which is a much bigger deal than being on the Scott Grant Show. Hi, we're back with Michelle Joy Nixon, and before the break, we were talking about your sports career, but then during the break, we were talking about purple some more, and I noticed you got a purple purse, and, and it's filled with purple items. So just tell the audience, uh, what, what are we talking about here? Well, it all started at 12 years old. I love purple. It was a, I was in a service organization, and the last ray of the rainbow was service, represented by the color violet. So um, that it all started there at 12 years old, and I love purple. And I did tell you a fun fact. When I was in college at the University of Florida, I actually painted my bedroom walls a light purple. So it is my life color. It's, it's my life color. It, it stands for a lot of goodness and greatness and uh, yeah so everything you see from my phone cover to my wallet if i could have a purple car i would a purple car i, mean, I think you can get them right i mean they make purple cars i've seen them at 16 i wanted a purple mustang opted for black but i really wanted purple i <laughs> want a life color you sound like you've got a lot of direction i, I hope so i oh I, michelle's got tons yeah. of direction you don't have a uh, a life color no do i, I uh, pink. Pink. <laughs> I'm not wearing any pink today, but I, I do wear a lot of pink. A pink shirts and pink ties. I, love I like that. I like wearing pink. Any man that can pull off pink, I'm a fan of. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. And I, and I actually think I, I look pretty good in the pink, right? Don't you think? Yes. Yeah. You know, funny stories. So we're t talking funny stories. Like, I, when I was doing the submarine speech, for, for a lot of those, I wore a pink tie. And it kind of almost got monotonous, right? And some guys, a guy, girl and a, a woman and a man came from uh, Denmark to see my submarine speech. Ooh. And she, her grandfather had been the chief engineer on the submarine that had sunk the ship right off our coast in 1942. And they showed up and I did a presentation at the downtown Jacksonville Library and I wore the purple tie, remember? Oh. Mm -hmm. And um, you're, Strong. Michelle, Strong. Michelle was all happy I wore the purple tie. I got to tell you, they were incredibly disappointed. They traveled across the world to see me, and they're like, where's the pink tie? Uh -oh. <laughs> Did you tell them maybe it just darkened up over the hours? It started out pink, now it's purple. I, I think it's in the same color wheel. It was funny. It just was funny. They were they, he, the, Heinrich, in particular, as you, you recall, was really upset that I wasn't in a pink tie. Well, I'm glad my fingernails are painted pink. Right I, now. Did, I didn't even notice, I'm but they are. I'm telling you, so really you're, you have pink on in spirit. So what does purple mean? You said it, it meant service to you, but how is yeah. it your life color? Yeah, just, you know, I think it brings brightness, power, self-worth, confidence, all of those good traits that we, we truly want and desire as people. Sometimes it's you know, tough to find, especially with, you know, some circumstances maybe that you're up against or negativity life can throw at you at times, but... Purple is um, it's a it's a strong color. It seems to get me through a lot and and touch a lot of people. Well, I certainly um think of you in purple. And had you shown <laughs> up in green, I would have been disappointed. So I do kind of em empathize a little with Heinrich now that you know yeah. I was wearing the wrong color that yeah, day. Purple is a very spiritual color. It for is, me. it is. We need to get you a life color there. Okay, I think she's leaning towards purple. I, she seemed probably, connected. She seemed connected with that statement. That I like that. I'll yeah. adopt purple. Okay, well, we can do that. Well, uh, you may have to ask permission. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is, it's a lot of color to share, so it's all usual. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. So you get out of college and you go to work um, in television. Yes. And where do you go work first? So I covered the Jacksonville Jaguars for two years. I also had a small stint with ESPN uh, for a couple years. And after that, uh, God really just worked on my heart 
there were some things in the sports and entertainment industry that I consider a little wicked behind the scenes, especially as a female. Um, it's more accepted now, probably the same uh, moral compass, if not worse, but who knows? Like I can't, this is me being assumptive, um, but I know what I experienced. And so I had to step away from, from that industry for my own, for my own spirit, for my own moral, uh, morals. So here you character. are, you're, you're, you, you got the dream job. You got, you got every, um, every male's dream job where you're working for ESPN and um, you feel like you can't continue. Is that, was that what it was? I mean, or, or did God, did God reach out to you? And I, 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 I see you're emotional. I, I, I appreciate you sharing this with us. Yeah, I'm very vulnerable. This is one of my, you know, part of my testimony. It's my story because it was my dream. And I know what Romans 12, 6 through 8 says, and it's your talent and ability. And I will tell you that there was one stint I had, uh, ESPN Dream Job, uh, season one with S Stuart Scott. And I was down south in Miami with Desmond Howard. And he, there were only 12 people to make the finals for this for this uh, reality show on ESPN and and it was a, about three cuts sports knowledge you know sports stats um, how to you know if you're a good conversationalist and I made I was the only female to go all the way to the final 12 and Desmond Howard picked me out and that was a catalyst you know okay this is what I'm supposed to do I'm meant for this and and it was a it was a good journey but at the end of it all around 24 four years old there were opportunities that arose and God shut the door on those through certain situations. Um, and so when you get asked to do certain things that question your morals and values, you have to step away and say, are you going to do that or are you not for a job? And we, you know, we've heard a lot about this kind of thing, uh, not just in the sports media, but in the media generally, what the last four or five years, I would say. And, um, you know, I think it's uh, abhorrent uh, that these sort of things go on, and um, and you're, what you're saying is that th these sort of things happen to you. Absolutely, and and I think when I tell my story, I was strong enough to step away. It wasn't easy because it was my dream. My heart goes out for the person that does it, if that makes sense, because there's someone that says and concedes and says yes to doing something that they shouldn't do for their own. Worth. Yes. When I hear about men's bad behavior and you hear that about dating and all of this stuff, the first thing I think of is what women are enabling such bad behavior. And to be honest, Jen, I would have to say it's it's not a majority in my opinion, but it's it's an it's a number. It's a great number. Oh, now you're saying a great number of men or a great number of women? Great number of women that, that, that go see. through this. Yeah, yeah. we can see. And, and and that agree to it. And that's, that's what we'll talk about soon is that joy is in you and in my small business, I really try to, to, to make and, and give tools to women to understand their worth and their value and not to, to jeopardize that. You know, you know, women have a tremendous value and, and we need to take a break, but we, let's come back and let's pick up right there. Perfect. If you want to know what's going on in Northeast Florida, Jacksonville, and St. Augustine yesterday, today, and tomorrow, tune in to Scott Grant at 103.9. He's got all the latest and the best history we've got. Hi, this is Scott Grant. You're listening to the Scott Grant Show, and we are recording from beautiful downtown Ponte Vedra Beach in the Stanfast Asset Management Studios, and I'm here with Jennifer Price. It's a great day. It is a great day, and it's a great day because we're here with Michelle Joy Nixon. Present. She makes me happy. Joy is in you. Always, always. So, um, you know, I'm always amazed. Before the break, we were talking about some of the issues you had in the in the uh, sports broadcasting business. And I'm always amazed uh, as I hear women tell their stories. Uh, I guess this is a common thing. I mean, you know, that, pe that women are, um, you know, for want of a better term, taken advantage of or uh, people attempt to take advantage of. Bullied. Them. Bullied. Is that a good word? Yes. Oh, I, I want to say I think it's awful, first off. Well, it is sad, but I, I do want to make... A a statement here that's really on my heart right now about that and I think as women too we need to be self-aware and self conscious of how we are presenting ourselves mm. oh yeah good point because there's the other side I hear women come to me hey these are my problems this is what's happening but then I then I look at them and I'm very honest in my inquiry of how do you carry yourself on a day-to-day -day? how how are you um, 
showing yourself off to social media? What does that look like? What is your brand? How are you presenting yourself on all these platforms? Are you, you do you see what I'm saying? And I, I, can't I, I do. And, and, you know, Jennifer and I talk about this and, and partially it's it's this whole thing of, you know, some some woman in a bar, uh, you know, takes a selfie from overhead and a low cut blouse and uh, you say, well, you know, what's the message there? And, it, and, mm-hmm. and then, then she she's complaining down. about how people are treating her objectively. Uh, I think that's I think that's needs to be talked about more. Because while my heart does feel for the ones that get questioned uh, for a position on the sideline or, or even a job in the office, at the same time, how are you carrying yourself? Because there is no one to blame except for you if it is questionable. And that's why I, you know, I get emotional and, like earlier because I've always carried myself in a very sophisticated, conservative way. So for that to happen to me, it hits home more than if I... Uh, was, you know, showing my goodies or, you know, crossing the line with, with how I present myself in a sexual manner. Yeah, yeah. And, I, you know, I hear, a lot of, I hear a lot of women say, well, I, you know, I ought to be able to dress any way I want and then nobody should say anything. Without consequences. And it, it doesn't work like it, that. You know, it's a somewhat old-fashioned view, but I, I agree. I don't think it does work like that. And it doesn't. And, and unfortunately, from social media and everything else we're, we're exposed to now, uh, I always, you know, I always use the phrase less is more when it comes to a lot of things, but not your clothing. Okay. So, um, make sure, you know, you present yourself, especially as a woman, um, that shows a good choice of character and, in, and just self-worth within, within your spirit. And self-worth, that may be a, that may be a really key phrase, I think. Uh, self-worth, what do you think? Definitely. I, I try to help women a lot. Uh, with their self-worth and regaining it. And I, I don't think, you know, if you build your self-worth around the way you look mm-hmm. um, and the way you present yourself in a, in a sometimes overly sexualized manner, that that's going to be, a, a, you know, a good lifetime self-worth for anybody, right? I it mean, wouldn't because I think if you do that, if you're doing a lot of things on a superficial front, kind of you know to make sure the world accepts you in a sense more likes more views uh and you're and you're doing that of subjecting yourself that's temporary satisfaction and when you lay your head you know to bed at night it's hard i would think um to be at full peace with yourself because really you're doing it to please somebody else yeah and and you're not yeah absolutely and, and you're not pleasing yourself because you're subjecting yourself ultimately you know, you were talking about social media, and we all know kind of some of the stuff that, you know, people post on social media, uh, Facebook, Instagram, uh, TikTok. New careers now. Uh, my, yeah. my daughter's 14. I want to be a YouTube star. I'm like, what? That's not a career. And, you know, as a full-time teacher, I hear that when I ask them what their, well, what their something career like, goal is. Something like 65% of kids now list their career goal as YouTube star. YouTube star, video game Oh. That's a high one too, you a know. Video and game uh, athlete, athlete still <laughs> athlete. Well, yeah, All right. I mean, we're well there, are, and there are full ride scholarships to I places know. like uh, uh, Caltech um, and other schools too. I'm sure uh, for kids who can play. Um, I'm trying to remember the name. Afterthought over. Overlord, overthought, something like that. <laughs> but it's one game. And to me, actually, it is an afterthought. I really, I they don't, actually play, I don't like. They it. actually play. Um, at the uh, at the Sun Bowl out in Arizona, they have a a, a national a championship, championship for for. They're for, making a lot of money. These little boys. It's funny, Alexander's Big outside. Boys. He's he could probably tell us what the game is that those oh, yeah. kids play. Uh, one of my speaking of that, so one of my students, we share a morning meeting every day. He said today, uh, you know, I said, what did you what did you do last night? And then they have to list their monthly goal, and we pass around a stuffed animal. And today, one of my kids said, yeah, last night I started 100 days of uh, one of the video games, Minecraft. 100 days of Minecraft. They have to do it. He's going to do it for 100 days with his buddies. Straight. 
Well, Every night. And, and my son, That'll change the world. My, my son <laughs> really, really maker. loves Minecraft. Alexander really loves Minecraft more than any other uh, game. And he plays it a lot. I just uh, we, don't, you know, 100 days straight, I'm like, where is the physical... Uh, physical aspect in that and mental stimulation uh, that's the only thing that i can I, I maybe maybe that's in there we're ethics right now we're talking well and the one thing with minecraft is there is the ability to program a little bit and we try and push that for him the other thing we do is uh we limit the number of hours he can spend each day i think it's an hour a day he gets to play on any of the games and that's always my biggest concern what is the parenting aspect of these video games right the parents, yeah. they're ultimately in control. And as a teacher, I've I've seen good parenting and everything in between. Yeah, I'm sure that's true. All right, let's take another break and we will come back uh, and talk to you more about your uh, your current what you're what you're doing currently. Okay. Hi, this is photographer Lenny Foster of St. Augustine and Gallery 144, and I'm here on the Scott Grant Show, WSOS 103.9, St. Augustine Radio. Hi, Scott Grant here, and we're broadcasting from beautiful downtown Ponte Vedra Beach. Uh, and I'm here with Jennifer Bryce. I'm here. And Michelle Joy Nixon. As am I. That's And it's great to be here with both of you. You're both uh, so smiley and happy and bubbly. It's it's just wonderful. Blondes and redheads, they'll do that to you. Oh. Yeah, it's a great they're... combo. Is it? Is it? That's good to know. That's good to know. Not even sure what to say about that. Well, you made, now you made me blush. I see that. I'm blushing. You Somebody almost matched my. You <laughs> almost matched my microphone. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so you're in this situation. You're you're leaving uh, what really had been a dream job, and you're going into a new career. Uh, and you had told me when we talked the other day that, that God sort of called you. Is, is that the way it worked? or Absolutely. When I go to speak, I always say uh, there, there's one kind of speech I do from plans A to F that I had. I've worked since I was 14. And I could really do manage a lot of different things in different industries because I've worked in them. But I always say plan G is plan God. And that led me to education. I never wanted to be a teacher. It was never put on my heart. But I will tell you at 1 a.m. in the morning, I woke up, led to the computer in my living room, searched substitute teaching the year that uh, I left the sports reporting industry and been in education since. And are you happy with that decision? I am. I am. I bet you're a great teacher. Yeah, I would. And my students would say that, that I'm crazy. Miss Nixon is crazy. But she loves us, and her room is peace and joy. That's our classroom theme. That's a very selfless career. Beyond, beyond. I will tell you, I turned down an $80,000 job in sports communications the same day I took a $32,000 one at, at a school. That was my first full-time job. And was this a, a, a public school, private school, the first one? Yeah, it was a Christian private school, high school. Taught, uh, taught four years there, brought in a TV production program and, and built that school to full capacity along with a couple others. And then I uh, stepped away after two years, went into an inner city school, taught four years of high school, 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade, and I brought in the TV production program as an elective, left there. I would say God removed me. I was very obedient. And in that interim, I obtained my master's degree in developmental psychology from Liberty, Liberty University. And uh, then I went to Daniel Academy. And that's where you are now. Yes, wow. with Daniel Kids. So, And these are kids that are special needs. Very heavy special needs, learning and behavioral disorders. Uh, and uh, they're, But they're my heart right now. And actually, um, I'll... I'll be there tomorrow. I get my three-year service award. So and these are there. all boys. Um, a handful no? of girls. I would say the ratio of what I teach, specifically fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, uh, two different blended classrooms. I would say ninety-two percent boys. Oh wow! Mm -hmm. Is that because of the behavioral problems, or is that? Yeah, it's it's pretty statistic statistically known that uh, you know the boys have the more behavior problems. Would you agree with that, though? I don't. I don't think that ever changes with age, right, Jen? Correct. <laughs> correct. We're still trying to correct their behavior. Right. Um, that's interesting. So you both think uh, uh, men, boys have behavioral problems. <laughs> well, so. I also think that it's the women's responsibility. 
Right. Okay, I like that. So, well, you know, you've heard me say that the progress of civilization and the progress of women are uh, inextricably intertwined. And I like say I like yes. saying that. So that that cool. kind of tells women to stop complaining. You know, you can only do so much complaining until you take responsibility. Accountability is one of my favorite words. And do you teach that to the kids? Absolutely. They know everything that I've had to do in my life. They get life lessons every single day. You know, and you're talking about these TV production classes, and I'm thinking um, that our kids, uh, my kid for sure, but our kids would love that, would just love that class. They did. You know, it pulled out personalities. They got to put different segments together, create the segment, you know, uh, just really fun stuff. It was, it was pretty cool for, for four years. Well, when Xander was at uh, Ocean Palms, which is here in, in Ponte Vedra, uh, he was the cameraman on the daily uh, TV show. So fun. And then one day, I guess, there was a problem with the camera, and the anchors left, and so uh, he got to be, for one day, he got to be the anchor person. I love it. I call it a one-man band. I did that often at University of Florida, and after that, uh, it's you're talking film, right, anchor, you're, you're all three in one. And so many of those opportunities just come to you by being available and making yourself available and ready to work have to be that's uh that's great that's really great so um at what point did you realize that this was the the goal i mean the future for you um that you, th being a teacher and the other things too yeah, so teaching is incredible. I love it. Uh, I finished my master's in 2017. I will tell you, in addition to teaching, I built a small business called Joy Is In You. We've talked about that a lot. And what is Joy Is? Tell us what Joy Is In You means to yeah, you. Yeah, people is why Joy Is In You exists. It's four foundational pillars, life coaching, couples coaching, motivational speaking, and the fourth pillar is community outreach because when we give to others, we receive joy in return. So it's really about giving uh, people of all ages. I have coached preteen, teenagers, uh, adults, seniors, just uh, and given them tools to, to really feel true peace and joy within themselves and, and have, a, have a more peaceful life. Yeah, the first thing I tell somebody when they say they're depressed or suffering from anxiety is to go out and volunteer. Go serve some soup at a soup kitchen. You know, that's that, I ha you do say that, and it's good advice. It really is good advice. Do you know the irony is that I just shared an article on my nonprofit website, my strictly volunteer-ran nonprofit website, that, um, that it's actually mental health. It's good for your mental health getting out and volunteering. I just shared that article. So that's a great point, Jen. You know, when I went to uh, see you on Sunday for the, um, you know, we're, we're at the Claire White mission, we were giving away, or you were giving away clothes. Um, it, it always fills me with a lot of, you know, good feelings to go out and meet people and shake their hands. And I think, you know, Jen's seen me shake a lot of hands over the years. But but I particularly like shaking all the hands of all uh, the clients. I guess that's probably what you call them. Yeah, I, I actually, I call my brothers and sisters in need. I call them the, my, our guests in need. Uh, you know, they're... We're all we're all in it together. But I, I, I shook a lot of hands and introduced myself to a lot of people. And I think people are often, as they often are, we're kind of confused. Like, who is this guy? Why is he introducing himself? Why is he sticking his hand out? Uh, but I felt, uh, you know, fulfilled, uplifted. That's a good word. Yes. I felt uplifted good. just being there. And I really believe this. It's a, it's a blessing that goes both ways. It's a blessing to the giver and the receiver. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty good. You cool. know, I was thinking about that. And I was thinking about, you know, it'd be great to get a clean pair of underwear if you don't have any. And it'd be great to get some pants and, 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 and a leather jacket. But, you know, having some guy come up and shake your hand and say hello has got to be a pretty um, powerful uh, gift as well. It is. Just to be recognized means volumes to uh, those that are less fortunate. Mm -hmm. To say you matter. You matter. You care. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Hey, that's a long segment. Let's take a break. Uh, Mike Kaufman is going to play some music. Say something. Hey, to Mike. Mike, you're a rock star. I'm Donna Deegan. It feels like I've been running my whole life, and now I'm running for Congress. This is the Scott Grant Show, and you're listening on 103.9. Hey, we're back on the Scott Grant Show with Jennifer Price. Hi, happy and, to be here. And Michelle Joy Nixon. As am I. I'm ready. Now, are you related to President Nixon? I've always wondered. I am not. There is a really cool newspaper clipping that our family, great-great-grandfather, maybe not that many greats, but 
they one of my family members worked with Richard Nixon. So we have that newspaper clipping that he's in the presidential office and it's pretty cool stuff. That is pretty cool. Definitely. But not related and that's not a lie. I, I I believe you. I you know, I don't think you are capable of lying. I actually am not. <laughs> I I just couldn't see you uh telling a lie. I I don't know why. Uh you could probably sell me the Brooklyn Bridge. Uh, or maybe the heart bridge. And I won't lie about either. I promise. <laughs> what is something surprising that we wouldn't know about you? Oh, okay. So this is this is great. I present myself, like I said earlier, in a very conservative, sophisticated way. So a fun fact. That is uh, something that I do carry that's in my purple purse, but it's not purple. Oh, I'm trying to think now. The, it's a riddle. What do you think I carry that's surprising in my purse, not purple? Car keys? A rabbit? Okay, so car keys wouldn't be surprising. So <laughs> An animal? Jen wi wins. Oh, okay, oh, wow. And I think the food would be a little messy in my purse, but I will tell you, I carry for my own safety and the safety of others a 380 Ruger handgun. Ooh. Always loaded. Oh, wow. Yeah. Now I'm looking under the desk. Oh, it's in there. Now, what prompted you to carry a weapon with you at all times? So I had one in college, a revolver, and my dad actually got me pepper spray when I was 16 because at like 17, I was opening a gym, uh, Bailey's Powerhouse, they're all over. You're welcome for the plug, um, Bailey Brothers, but it was early. It was 4 a.m. I was waking up, so 5 a.m. to 1 p.m. I was working every day, and I, so I was pretty safe. I had to be safe. and. Then became the gun, and, and then I just upgraded. And, you know, with the mission field, you know, out at heart and soul, you always want to be prepared. And uh, also just some different forums and places that I've, that I've worked at and I've, I've gone to. And have, have there been moments where you were glad you had it? Absolutely. Absolutely. There have been moments in, you know, different houses. You think you hear a noise? And I'm out there scoping the whole living room, you know, ready to ready to rock. You know, you, you kind of look like one of the, particularly with the purple hat, you kind of look like one of the characters from one of those TV, uh, police, FBI, NC, NCIS oh, type shows. Oh, fits that. You, can't you yeah. see her in one of those? You know, I coming around the corner that. with the gun up in the air. James Bondish. Yeah, no. Very. You could pull that off for sure. I actually did sure. a James Bond shoot uh, for somebody in, a, in our city's charity event. Uh, a few months ago, but was this the Sterling? Yes, yeah, 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 yes. yeah, yeah. So, so I did, a, I did a Bond girl shoot and had and had my gun actually in in one of the photos. But uh, ironically enough, there's a really cool story I want to share with you. It's it's fun for the audience. It's called Code Red. I've um, entitled it, and it's because I got arrested due to carrying my gun in the airport. Oh wow! Oh wow! Yeah, 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 you're well, not now you knew to, better than you that. Shouldn't, well, you shouldn't carry a gun in the airport. I Everybody didn't look that. like this. It, I, more ironically, I was in like this green dress to the floor. I was going to visit my then boyfriend, had my hair down, makeup, ready to rock and roll. And uh, yeah, I, I was ambushed by two two cops. I was already through security and I'll never forget the entire airport went uh, code red, co code red, shut down mode. And uh, they, they arrested me first time, only time I've ever been arrested. And I, I was freaking out. <laughs> But they, you know, calmly said, you know, read me where I writes and, hey, do you have your concealed weapons? I'm like, oh, it's in there. It's in the yellow purse. I actually had yellow that day. And uh, they walked me all the way across. I was in lane four. So if you're ever at JIA in lane four, no, I got arrested in that lane. Across to the holding cell upstairs. Oh, so they do have a holding cell. They do. They do. And uh, they, they took the handcuffs off of me. I still need to catch that flight. So that was my mission. I just want to let y'all know. And just like I could sell you the Brooklyn Bridge, I sold myself to get back on this doggone flight. So I'll tell you how that went down. I was in, in the holding cell. I haven't cried yet, but they looked up uh, my my record at the, through the FBI to make sure I was okay. And I was trying to do this character defense saying, hey, you know, I carry a gun because I, I serve, you know, the homeless and sheltered and the downtown area can be a little rough at times. And, and then also, you know, here's where I work currently. So I, I have it in the car. And uh, back then I was, you know, at inner city school in between drug houses. So yes, I was always prepared. And I, you know, they still had to go through their whole entire process. But I was like, I need to get on this flight. I need to get on this flight. But ma'am, we can't, we can't put you on this flight unless your gun gets taken from us. Call mom immediately. 
She happened to use the restroom at the exit that was super close, turns around, comes all the way back into, you know, to security, and I just bawl. Mom, I got arrested. No, this mommy. happened. Mom, you know, they give her the gun. I go through security again, TSA. They go, how are you able to come through here again? No one flies the same day they get arrested with a weapon that's loaded. I said, Jesus, that's all, you know, um, let's, I got to get going. I got I to miss this flight. And, and even more funny, just to cap this off, the Southwest representative comes over and he says, Michelle Joy, Michelle Joy. And I'm like, oh yeah, it's me. He goes, let's go. We're holding the plane for you. Can you believe someone in this airport had a loaded gun on them this morning? And I said, that was me. And he's like, no way. And he was laughing. And I was like, let's go. So I got in my seat. I met an awesome girl on the way to Denver. And um, yeah, I had I had screwdrivers around uh, a couple rounds of, of those <laughs> at a, the, the hour of probably 10. Oh, wow. Yes, yes. Now, were you were you expecting that you were going to be able to ca- carry the gun on the plane? Or, or was it, did you just forget I, I, you I, had it? I honestly just forgot. You know, the weight, you get caught up. And, and, uh, and when I ironed my clothes that morning, I literally said to myself, I'll never forget. I said, oh, I got to keep this at mom's house when I go over there I'm gonna you know put it in the in the room and I just forgot to take it out I once had a pair of ha- handcuffs in my purse and they it was my son's magic trick I swear <laughs> oh yeah and they didn't believe it yeah, they did not you? believe me I was like I swear it's my son's magic trick well, and for, it just happens to be in my purse for what it's worth I was flying up to um, <laughs> a funeral right after fourth of July a couple years ago remember uh, I went up to to uh, my for college friend had died and uh, I had flip flops on, and I wore the flip flops to the beach. And you know, everybody had shot off a ton of fireworks, and I had stomped some of those fireworks off. And so I tested. You know, the thing said you have um, gunpowder on you, and they dragged me in a room, and I kept going, check the flip flops, check the. I'm pretty sure it's the flip flops. Yeah. And they did, and I got on the. I ended up getting on the flight, but I remember thinking, I'm not. I'm never getting out of here. Right. They're, yeah, they Which take is us not as bad as a gun, as yeah. a gun, but still flip flops with with gunpowder on them. Yeah, uh, let's take a break and we will come back and uh, talk some more with uh, what is turning into be one of my favorite guests. Yay! Hi, this is Grace Della Rosa, and welcome to the Scott Grant Show on one hundred three point nine FM WSOS. Hi, Scott Grant here from beautiful downtown Ponte Vedra Beach on the Scott Grant Show, and I'm here with Jennifer Price. Feeling the joy. Oh, so am I. And Michelle Joy Nixon. Because it's contagious. Oh, it is. Oh, and you good. are contagious, man. You're Yay. like, uh, uh, you are contagious. Purple, oh. joy. It's all, it's all in us. And joy is Jesus, others, yourself. That's what I think it is. That's and what it means, right? I hope so. I, that's what I always thought. It kind of reminds me of, uh, you know, talking about sports earlier, that old uh, Gail Sayers book, uh, I Come Third. Oh, okay. Uh, he wrote a book about a guy named who played with him who died of cancer named uh, Brian Piccolo. Wow. Uh, famous football players. Uh, a long time ago. Right. A long That's time why ago. It's my not era. My to era, the brain. not yours. So, okay. So, the, one of the very first times that I remember seeing you, uh, you were on television. Okay, cool. And you were on a game show. Yes. And I think it was called The $100,000 Pyramid. Mm. And I rushed home from work. Uh, in order to watch you on the television. And my whole family's like, who is this person you're watching? I said, well, she's just this really special woman, and I want to watch her on television. And she's from Jacksonville, which sort of assuaged everybody, but they, uh, nobody could figure out, I, I don't think, even now assuaged. why. Assuaged. Assuaged. This is a good word, right? Great word. Word I, of the day. Yes. He is a vocab whiz. Uh, am I? Yes. Every single day he comes up with a vocabulary word that I've never heard, and I think it's impossible. <laughs> but he does. Well, you know, Taylor was in today, and Taylor was asking me what in, in, what endurement <laughs> well, that's meant. Easy. I know, but she, she came up with endurement out of a contract, and I was trying to explain endurement. I won't even try. It's it's all I couldn't. I, I know what it means. It's a legal term. In it's context, like a benefit. Right. It's like okay. a benefit of a contract. A benefit that endure, endures. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. But let's go back to something more interesting <laughs> and a little less uh, weighty. Yes. hundred thousand dollar pyramid. Well, you know Tell it is it. weighty. Yeah. It is weighty, but it's a good weighty, and it's it's all it's all weighty. So check it out. I did a reality show stint in 2016, and uh, that kind of led me into being on this uh, having having an opportunity to be on this game show. So uh, they called me up 
and it is the one hundred thousand dollar pyramid, which has a lot of vocabulary acquisition. I think word association. You have to, you know, oh yeah, timed. for sure. You got to be ready with clues and and just um, have that have that brain power. So they called and I did a a three month pyramid boot camp. Every week they would call and and kind of play the game over Skype, and I became an all star, a pro. I made all the cuts, and uh, we we filmed it in May of two thousand eighteen over Mother's Day weekend. So that was really special that my mom came to New York with me on, on that trip. Um, so it, and, and that's where it's filmed? In New York City? Yeah, yeah. ABC Studios. And uh, and it was really cool. Not There are two ABC Studios, so the one on uh, 44th. But I, I started out, uh, I'll just get to the nitty gritty, 20 minutes before showtime, I was uh, in, in practice with the executive producer and I was rocking and rolling, hitting seven for seven and categories and clues in record time. They said, Michelle Drew, you cannot get any better at this game. That, I mean, I really couldn't. I, I was, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. I've been practicing with my students. I have the board game. I'm really prepped for this. And, uh, and you had your students uh, kind of doing it with you? Yes. Yes. And Michael Strahan talked about that. He said, yeah, I heard you've been playing with your students, Pyramid Boot Camp. Yeah. I was like, yeah. They... They're learning and they're they're loving Miss Nixon has this opportunity. But then I was paired and partnered with Gail King, Oprah Winfrey's best friend, and Terrell Owens, love him dearly, great athlete. Not great game players. And you saw that, right? You witnessed I, that firsthand? I, I saw I watched the show and I felt I felt bad for you. I did. I felt bad for you. It was um how would I describe it? Um it was a train wreck. Torture. <laughs> right. <laughs> Torture. So if you felt that from from watching it from the outside, imagine how I felt in the game show seat. I, you know, it, it, I, you say you and you're telling you're telling us that you really were feeling it. I, I didn't notice it. You seemed really happy. Uh, the joy was in you, as far as I could tell, and I was impressed by that. I think it was one of the, one of the things early on that impressed me is that you went through this thing. I'm watching you on television. And I'm thinking to myself, if that was me, I would want to just crawl underneath the, the desk there and, and hide. Yeah, every commercial break, I was coaching up Gail King on how to play this game. And, and then I'm at, you know, I'm seeing Terrell's not a great game player with my opponent. But by the time I was done coaching her, she was better and helped him, right? And then Terrell Owens and I, we we meshed as, as a, you know, team, but not as a team that's going to win. We couldn't even get the trip. Uh, because he couldn't get one of my clues, and he had probably 15 seconds with the best clues I could give him. Uh, but, you know, I, I made a lot of, uh, I planted seeds of joy. How about that? So my purpose was fulfilled, but I did not even take away. A lot of people ask me, what did you, what did they give you? You know, it's a game show, and you didn't win anything. And I saw $50,000 blow up in my face because you can tell the way they structured this pyramid that it was made for me as a teacher and and so forth, what they knew about me. And, um, yeah, no keychain, no T-shirt. A lot of people say I have the shirt, um, but I don't. I don't. Home game? Any home game prize, like a takeover game? Nothing. I had to buy that off of eBay. (laughs) Yeah, so literally nothing. And uh, But head held high. I will tell you this, the, the torture came about four days after I could not sleep. I had nightmares just replaying every single clue and how it all unfolded. That. I've never experienced that before until this show. It's so like being in battle. It had to be. I don't mm-hmm. know why it was. And I, you know, you know, I'm so strong willed and strong minded. I don't know how I was not able to overcome that. But it was I think it's when you practice for day in and day out and and the end result is not anywhere of what you thought. I, I can relate it to that. It's really weird. Now, you, you met my son when we brought him down to Heart and Soul uh, Ministries, uh, and we were give, helping give away uh, clothing. And uh, the other day, within the, like the last week, he came downstairs and he said, uh, uh, did you know Dad has a Jeopardy pen? And he, he likes to go through like everything of mine. Yeah. And, and his mother. Inquisitive. Too. Right, right. He go, digs through everything. And I think uh, either I or Sharon said, oh, yeah, yeah, we know that Dad's got a Jeopardy pen. I didn't know where it was. And he's like, why does Dad have a Jeopardy pen? And he says, uh, I, I think Sharon answered for this one. She said, well, you know, your dad would uh, try it out. He went, went pretty far trying out for Jeopardy. And You so, got a pen. Did you make the show? No, I did not so make the show. So you don't make the show and you get a okay, pen. Right. But we're talking about replaying stuff. So he says, what question did you miss, Dad? Oh, and my response was, the gift of the Magi. 
And that is the question I missed oh, missed 25 years day. ago. Haunt the you. gift of the Magi haunts me. Yeah. Okay. It's it's a it's a play I think by Eugene O'Neill and and I and I knew it but I couldn't come up with it. Ooh. I was sitting there I knew blank. it. I knew you drew a blank. I just couldn't remember the name of it. And I think the hardest thing for me to even wrap my head around still is that I did the best I could do. So that's where you just lose this sleep and you go, wow. Maybe we should start a uh, a support group. And, and, we, and, we, and I know Chris Hoffman could probably would probably join because she what she actually made it on Jeopardy and lost. Oh wow! Uh, for people, yes, Christina, oh, I like, I, I like this I idea. Like her too, so yeah, shout she's out great. To her. She's Chris, awesome. Shout out to a game Christina. show reject. I just saw her after at party. A, yeah, at an Iceman hockey game. So we chatted, and um, she's, she's doing really big things nifty. in the city. Yeah, she, and she gave us. I've spoken over there a couple of times, and she really got me started. Uh, uh, doing the historical speeches, uh, one of the very first ones we do, and, and and the big one of the biggest ones I've still done to this day uh, was at the Beaches Museum on the 75th anniversary of the Gulf of America. Uh, and attack. I was just about to say I've taken my students uh, there every year um, as a field trip, so pretty. Cool. Oh, that's a great place yeah. to go. Well, the three of us can have a support group and uh, and co- on console each other on our. Uh, Less than stellar performances. Let's call, and frankly, it, like, I let's did call the, it like GSA, Game Show Anonymous. Yeah, that's right? good. Right? Cool. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. 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 Well, this show has been more fun than a game show. Uh, absolutely, especially one that you don't win at. Yeah. And we'll, we'll make sure you take well, you something. Because we're all well, winning no, here. You're, no, you won. You won. We, we, you won the show today. You are the Yay. winner. Yeah. She won, won one of your books. Yes, you won one of my books. Yes. <laughs> yes. Signed by the author. Come on. It doesn't get better than that. <laughs> we're uh, we're pushing the time. Uh, listen, I'd love to have you back again. I would love to. Come there back. were tons of things I want to talk about, and we didn't get to talk. I about. have stories for days. I actually probably three sixty five. I have a story for every day. Well, we'll bring you back let's if you'll come. It. And uh, it's been great having you. And uh, we're, let's uh, end the show, I guess. Right? Uh, my, my mic drop ending. Go ahead. You got All better? right, mic drop. Mic dropping. <laughs> <laughs>